this, Thanksgiving is over, which signifies the true beginning of the Christmas season, in my book at least. See my tree is up, lights hung, and all the Christmas candles, making sure I smell like the season at all times. I also, I really love watching those cheesy Christmas movies. Feels like a confession, right? I mean, they all play out the same. And maybe it's like the simplicity of it or something, I don't know. But for those who don't watch them, I'm gonna spoil them all for you right now. So first, the main character, a career woman, she's too busy for love, but she has to move or at least go back to a small town for a while, usually her hometown, where some local man teaches her about the true spirit of the holiday. It starts snowing and even amidst the adversities they face, they fall in love. Also, there's a dog. I mean, it's hilarious. I, <laughs> no matter how similar these movies are, they literally have like the same basic story plot and the ending is the same. But the middle has some unique characteristics that still draw you in even though you already know how it ends. Like I watch these, I mean, I, I really do like all of them, I'm telling you. And it's so funny because I still am somewhat like on the edge of my seat, like the conflict is arising and it's like, oh my gosh, is this gonna derail the whole thing? This is the movie that's gonna break the stereotype Nah, it all ends well. They fall in love and there you go. But we all know that like life is not a Hallmark Christmas movie. There might be some similarities, but like overall, not true. But we're, ta we're calling this series Christmas at the Mix. We have in previous years the same thing. But this year, I want us, I want us to look at not just the Christmas story of a baby being born, but the entire story of the entirety of scripture. The Bible from beginning to end. See, scripture allows us to see God's full redemptive narrative from the very beginning to how it all ends. And the Christmas story, it seems to fall right in the middle. Really this crazy turn in the story that changed everything. And this story isn't just one that was written, past tense, but it is still playing out here and now. And we were right in the middle of God's story, which means that this crazy turn, Christmas, is a part of each of our stories, whether we've realized it or not. And that's what we're going to be looking at over the next two weeks as we break down the Christmas story. We see how it interacts with our own story. So tonight, we're going to take a stroll through the Old Testament. Like, we don't often look for the Christmas story in the Old Testament, right? I mean, the verbatim story of Jesus' birth is found in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. But it's not the only place. So all the way back in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, we see that God created everything. And it was good. He created man and woman, and it was very good. But then what happened? The fall. People sinned. They broke that relationship with God. Now let's pause here for a moment because I, I want you to answer this question that is huge for where we're headed tonight, okay? Do y'all think God was surprised by this? I mean, he's like, oh no, okay, they sinned. I don't, I don't know, I didn't see that coming. Uh, ooh, what am I gonna do now? Like, no. See, this is, is a big moment in scripture because it's so clear that God was not surprised. He knew this was going to happen. Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between you, the serpent, meaning Satan, and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now this, it seems like a weird verse to point out, especially in light of Christmas, but scholars have agreed that this verse is pointing to the offspring of the woman, meaning down the lineage to the birth of Jesus and how he would defeat the serpent, Satan. So think about this, like we are three chapters into scripture and already we're pointing to God's redemptive plan through the birth of Jesus, Christmas, one story, his story based on the promise of a coming savior. And the even crazier part is, this isn't the only place that we see these prophecies of Jesus' birth. Really, all of scripture is pointing to Jesus. So think about it. Thousands of years before Jesus is born, these things were spoken and written by prophets to point people toward the coming day of the Savior. So let's look at two more places in the book of Isaiah that point to the birth of Jesus. Isaiah 7.14 says, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgins shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And just two chapters later, Isaiah 9, 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, 
and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Guys, I love this. Again, thousands of years before the birth of Jesus, God encouraged his people with the promise that he's coming. The Savior is coming. Watch for him. And he will be God with us. He will be born to a virgin. He will come as a baby. Look at how chapter 9 verse 6 describes him. Wonderful counselor. He will make wise plans unlike all the kings before. Mighty God. He will be God. Everlasting Father. He will care for his people. And Prince of Peace. He is the ruler, but his reign will bring about peace. There's never been a king like this. And these prophecies pointing to the Christmas story, pointing to the promise, were an encouragement to God's people. And even for us now. And the biggest reason this is true is the reason I told you that that question of was God surprised in the Genesis passage, why that answer is so important. And it's this, understanding that ultimately God is in control. See, just like we saw in Genesis, he made everything and it is his. The redemptive narrative of scripture again and again shows us that that this is his story. He is powerful enough, knowledgeable enough that nothing surprises him because he already knows. We see that when he points to us, uh, when he points us to a savior being born in the very first three chapters of scripture, he had a plan and that plan is good. That plan led us to a savior, the very son of God, fully God and fully man, who was born humbly as a baby, lived a perfect life and bore the weight of my sin and yours on the cross so that we could be made right with God. See, God's story is playing out and him being in control is seen so clearly from the start. But we see it even more vividly in these prophecies that point us to the birth of Jesus. Remember our Isaiah passages. God set his plan in motion. And throughout scripture, we see him using imperfect people to bring about his purposes. God is in control. Now, look, this, this doesn't mean that he makes people do things. Really, this is this is kind of a glimpse into a theological term, okay? So study of God, it's a term called sovereignty, which simply put is God is king over all, he holds all power, and he is present in all of it. He can bring about his good purposes through any circumstance, and he already knows every part of history, or I'm going to say the cheesy thing here, history, his story. And I know it's terrible. It's terrible, but I mean, it's true. So he knows he already knows. So why was it considered an encouragement to God's people that he is in control? Why would that be the case? See the answer to this, it's just as true for us as it was for them. And it's what we do with it. See Adam and Eve, like what had happened? They just sinned against God. Like Big deal here. They brought brokenness into the world. And now jump to Isaiah, God's people, everything that was going on in that passage right before, they were turning a deaf ear to him and his ways, and they were choosing to do their own thing. So what does God follow with? See, these prophecies pointing to the promise of the birth of Jesus, they were the very picture of hope for God's people because he's pointing them to the savior who is coming to make a way for them. It was a reminder in the midst of their trials, even the ones they caused, that he still has them. He can still use them for his good. He's giving them hope for what's to come. And see, maybe, maybe that's what you need to hear tonight, that God is in control. Maybe, maybe you're in a season of turning a deaf ear to the things of God, or you messed up like really bad and you think you can't come to him or you can't come back to him. But look, the birth of Jesus reminds us that God didn't send Jesus to save good people. He sent Jesus to save broken people. People have messed up. They've made mistakes. They've chosen lesser stories. He sent Jesus because he knew we needed a savior. Think about it. Like situations had to be just right for Jesus to be born. Certain people met at certain times and God used both both believers and non-believers just as he had promised all the way back in Genesis. 
a savior was born. It was a fulfillment of what he promised. He is in control. So look, like we all know that life is very much not a Hallmark Christmas movie. Our stories, they're much more complex, much less predictable. But there's this common theme. The plot is similar because the author is the same for all of us. The conflicts vary because we're all unique beings with different circumstances and personalities and struggles, but the author has already shown us how it ends. See, the Christmas story was Jesus' first coming, and there will be a day when he comes again. The Bible tells us that Jesus is coming back to make all things new, and there will be no more tears, no more pain. We'll be with him. We know how it ends. So when the struggles of life come up, which they will, or when we mess up, because we will, we can find this peace and comfort in the fact that our God, the author, is in control. And while we may not know the specific details of our story, we do know that the Christmas story made a way for us. And he's, show, and he's already shown us how it all ends. So in your story, whether you're in a time of conflict or, or maybe a time of joy, remember God is in control. We can have hope in whatever part of our story we find ourselves in. And this Christmas season, the call here, in the midst of busyness and chaos, stress, fun, joy, all of it, we want to find our hope in the author who is in control.